And if I sound tired, it's because I am. All right, so we are live now, and I'm going to start with introducing myself. I'm Savon Smith. I'm the founder of Savon's Academy Stars, which is a basketball program with the city of Royal Palm Beach and West Palm Beach. This channel that we're on is called Founding Players, which is our YouTube channel, but it's also a foundation called Founding Players, and this name came to be because of six basketball players that I start with at age seven, they were the founding players of the Savants Academy Stars basketball program. They all came with the intentions, you know, to possibly play in college and make it to the NBA. That was their goal. But in addition to their goal, I wanted to make them aware that that is not guaranteed that if you practice playing basketball, that you're going to make it professional. So I wanted to teach them financial literacy. So that's how founding players came to be because I wanted to open up doors for them to learn more than just basketball, but to learn how to manage money through their life. So again, I'm Savon Smith and welcome to our YouTube. And tonight we're gonna share information on some stocks and I'm gonna help you guys to you know, do some research. Well, I'm gonna share stocks with you as well as um, cryptocurrencies and what you can do is do your own research. Do not take my word for it. Just take the information and do your own research and invest at your own risk. Give me a second. Okay. I am not a financial advisor. This video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. This video is not financial advice. You can lose money investing into the stock market. You are liable for any losses that you incur from investing in the stock market. I shall not be held liable for any losses you may incur by investing or trading on the stock market. And contact your licensed financial professional in your area for professional advice. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to start by 
type in a few things in the chat. So make sure your YouTube is up to where you'll see what I'm sharing. I'm going to be typing right now. I'm going to start with a crypto exchange. So take your notepad out and write so you can do your research. I don't think that one do. Hold on. Oh, it did go to receiver. All right, so I just typed in Voyager. That's an exchange where you can buy cryptocurrency. Um, I'll type in Coinbase as well, just so people be familiar. Coinbase. So All right, so those are two exchanges where you can actually buy your cryptocurrency. Voyager is kind of not new, but it's becoming, Coinbase is a more popular exchange. So most people that you speak to, if they're gonna buy cryptocurrency, most of them know about Coinbase, very popular. That was like the first exchange that you can, when Bitcoin first came out, Coinbase is where you could have found, you know, your um your coins and, and purchase them. So I've had a Coinbase account for since the beginning of time, since the beginning of crypto. But then came other exchange and Voyager is one of them that's becoming popular. So I list them in there so you guys can know if you're not already buying crypto, there goes two exchange that you can buy them from. Again, I'm going to push a little bit more Voyager, even though I've had Coinbase from the beginning, I'm going to push Voyager. I opened up a Voyager account and I've been, you know, using them a lot more than Coinbase right now for the mere fact that Coinbase been around. So I will equal Coinbase to Tesla, Tesla, which is Tesla is popular. So Coinbase is more popular than Voyager. But with popularity comes more expense. It's more expensive. So Tesla is say seven, eight, six, seven hundred dollars a share. How many poor people can buy a thousand shares of Tesla? When Coinbase, the rumor is Coinbase is gonna IPO. And once they do IPO, chances are their stock's gonna be pretty high. I use Airbnb as as an example, Airbnb is popular. So when they IPO, chances are their stock's gonna be pretty high. But you always wanna check out the companies that's flying under the radar. So I believe Voyager is flying under the radar. So it's time to get in, you know, before it becomes like a Coinbase, you know? So you don't want things to be advertised and you're hearing about it when it's advertised and that's when you're getting into it. You want to get into it sooner before everyone knows about it. So very few people, I would say, know about Voyager. So you want to get in now. Now I'm going to do some typing and I'll speak after. All right, so the first one I put in the chat is VGX. So that is a token. So I'll put VGX as Voyager's token. All right, so you can invest in the token. Um, I look to see how much that's going for. Again, you want, imagine you had gotten into Bitcoin. Hold on. 
Imagine you had gotten into Bitcoin when Bitcoin was like a dollar. And now Bitcoin is 59,000. So just look at these cryptocurrencies as second or third or fourth opportunities or just opportunities in general to get in early. Even if you really don't know which, you know, one of these cryptocurrencies are really going to take off. You still want to get in, you know, on the hope that a few of them take off. Because even though Bitcoin is so popular, it doesn't mean that that's the only crypto that's going to exist. It's it's not. It's not the only one that's going to exist. One second. <clears throat> Rod, I see you in the chat. It will be much better if you come in the live. Just saying. I feel like the teacher. I don't want to only be the one, the only teacher. All right, so Voyager is $4.35. So just look at Voyager being $4.35, where you can buy in right now and buy a couple shares at, oh, oh, that's what Rod was doing, putting in $4.82. Oh, excuse me, I didn't even realize that. I just saw your name. I didn't even see that you put the number, you know, because I was basically saying, why is Rod in the chat and not in the live? Hmm. Click the link, Rod. Click the link I sent you. But he put $4.82. On Voyager itself, I'm looking at it right now. It says $4.35. So again, imagine you had caught Bitcoin when it was $4.82. Well, right now you have a choice. Oh, or I'd say soon, soon come. All right, Jamaican. All right, so imagine you had gotten Bitcoin when it was $4.82. Well, here's your choice. Here's your chance with Voyager. You don't want to miss this. Okay, so get in on Voyager. <clears throat> okay, next opportunity. Same company, Voyager. I put in VYGVX, I mean VF. That is the actual stock ticker symbol so let me write that and i'm moving very slow so you guys because you guys don't want to miss this you don't want to miss this opportunity so i'm moving very slow okay so when you go searching to try to buy the stock, you want to put in the ticker. All right. So there it is, ticker is. All right, so now I'm going to type where you can find it. All right, so TD Ameritrade, it's not on Robinhood. So if you have a TD Ameritrade account, then good, it's there. You can invest in Voyager. I'll put the price that it is right now. Last time I checked, that was the price per share. Now, it's an OTC stock. Let me put OTC. What OTC is, is over the counter. So before it's popular and nobody's thinking about it, you can invest in it before it IPOs on more than one platforms. All right, give me a second. All right, I'll 
continue. Um, we have Alan coming in. All right, Alan is in now. All right, if you guys are, whoever is out there in the YouTube chat, whenever you're trying to get in, do what Alan just did and tell me that you're trying to get in and I'll let you in because I'm not really paying attention to that. I'm not seeing the notifications. So, cause I'm in the chat writing right now. So Rod, if you're coming in, let me know. All right, where was I? OTC. All right, so if, if you don't have TD Ameritrade, you could um, download it, connect your bank account. And I'm gonna say this, TD Ameritrade, you can find almost any stock. I have uh, Wells Fargo. I have a Wells Fargo um, trading account. And majority of times I look at a stock that I know is, is going to be popular and I've done my research to, to get in. A lot of times Wells Fargo will tell me this security you know, is not supported. This stock is not supported and you have to call them. But when I go on TD Ameritrade, I can buy that stock. The difference with why I keep checking Wells Fargo is because usually once you transfer money from your regular, regular account to your trading account with Wells Fargo, you're able to buy stocks right away. There's no wait. So if you gave me news right now and the stock's available and I can buy it in Wells Fargo, there's usually no problem. I can just put money in right away and it just goes through. But with TD Ameritrade, you know, you send your money today before 4 p.m., you know, before 4 because the market closes at 4. You know, if you don't know, it's 9.30 to 4 p.m., Monday through Friday. So it closes at four. So if you, let's just say you send a hundred dollars before four, between three and four, usually that'll be in your account the next day for you to be able to trade. But that money is only loaned to you. It's going to take a couple of days for it to totally clear from your bank account. So if you send money with TD Ameritrade today at say anytime before 4 p.m., You'll have that money on Thursday to trade with, but that's basically like a loan. It won't clear your account. It'll show as pending that it's coming out, but it won't really clear until a week later, but it'll be available for you to use. So you're basically using borrowed money just to give you an idea. They're lending you money to be able to trade. Okay, it says two business days, but you're able to send it today and use it tomorrow. Just so just so you guys know that. So I usually send money. If I know I'm going to get into a stock, I'll send money today and I'll have it tomorrow to use. But I love the promptness of using Wells Fargo. But the thing is, some of those stocks that I want to buy is not readily available and that's the sucky part but the money is always available but you just can't buy everything but everything is available in wells fargo it's just for whatever reason you can't buy so i don't know why but in that case i'm just letting you guys know that because td ameritrade is where you want to be they seem to always have these stocks available so if someone tell you hey this stock's going to take off do your research and jump in it in TD Ameritrade. Great app. So I just want to put that out there. All right. So Voyager, they have their stock, which is $26, $27 for one share. And um, they have their token, which is $4.82. Where do you get their token? You can get their token. I believe you can get on Coinbase, but we're pushing Voyager. Because as I say, they're less expensive. They don't have fees like Coinbase do. So I think it's a better platform to, to use. 
their customer service is great. Um, Coinbase goes down a lot, especially when crypto starts going up. I'm just putting that out there. So Voyager is very good. You could buy the token on Voyager. You can go into your Google place, your Play Store, and you can just download it, connect your bank account, and VGX is a token. You buy their token right on Voyager. And then if you want the stock, TD Ameritrade, and you saw I put the ticker symbol in there. So I put the tokens symbol and I put the ticker symbol. Anybody have any questions? I'm talking, you know, nobody's saying, hey, yeah, I'm going to invest in that, you know, or asking any questions about it. So I open it up right now to any questions before we move on to anything else. I have a question for you. And you are? Anna. And who's Anna? I'm just kidding. Go ahead, Anna. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, hey, so look, I have look, a TD look, Bank. I'm a little tired, so, you know, uh, you got to let me make some. So tape. am I. So am I. <laughs> okay, so listen, I have a TD Bank account. And I do see the um, the TD Ameri Ameritrade. Um, can I use that app? Because it, it's already linked to my bank account. No, I think I, it's two different things. I, I, I can answer that question for you. This is oh, Alan. Go. Oh, yeah. Hey, Alan, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. All right. I was just looking at some tickers. This was a little quiet. <laughs> um, <clears throat> with the TD, it's not the same because I open up a TD account, a checking and savings account, specifically with TD Bank because I had my TD Ameritrade account for maybe 10 10. 10 or 12 years. So I said, you know, and I asked the rep, went to TD Bank. I said, could I transfer money back and forth? And they said, yeah, you can, but it's not the same. It's not, the, it, even though both of them are the same company, it's two different parts of the company. So what Savan was saying is when you open up a trading account directly with a bank like Wells Fargo, I don't have mine with Wells Fargo, but I have one with Chase. I can transfer $1,000 from my Chase checking account directly into my Chase trading account. And then the funds are available, but with the banks, they restrict, they, they restrict you. But with TD, their system is different. It's, it, it's, it's two different entities. So if you try to transfer money from your TD checking to your TD uh, uh, Ameritrade account, it's, they may make it immediately available to you, but that doesn't mean you will be able to buy OTC stock. And that's why I closed my account. I still have my TD Ameritrade account, but I closed my savings and check-ins because I said my, the whole reason I opened it was so I could easily transfer money back and forth between my checking account to my trading account. So I don't know if that answers your question. Sounds like it yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, it did because um, I have like four bank accounts with them. So I'm able to move in and out and like transfer money because I have a check-in, a saving, a credit card, and I have a marketing account. And I mm -hmm. did see the Ameritrade app. Like if you log into the app, because I have it on my phone, mm -hmm. it does tell you Ameritrade, TD Ameritrade. So I was thinking like, maybe what if I could transfer money from my check-in or my savings to the Ameritrade and I could just buy stocks. But now I'm, I think I'm not going to do that. Yeah, because when I opened up my TD account, they weren't too, you know, they, they wasn't too sure. They told me they think I could. So what happened was when I opened my checking and savings, they said, call the TD Ameritrade department. They'll link your TD Ameritrade account to your online banking system. So when I sign in, I can see my checking, my saving and my TD Ameritrade account. But it does not allow you to make transfers like you would through, say, a Chase or a Wells Fargo. But what Savon was saying with Chase, because Savon has Wells Fargo. And I have Chase trading account and they, the big banks, they don't like penny stocks for some reason, you know? So for, for example, I tried to trade through my uh, Chase and buy some penny stocks me and Savon was, were talking about earlier this afternoon. And I put a thousand dollars straight up, you know? And the minute I tried to buy a penny stock, it gave an, a, 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 an alert says penny stocks are not allowed. So I said, why am I keeping this much in there? Let me take it out, transfer it to TD but I have to wait that 24 hours for the money to sit there to buy OTC stock. That's the only thing with these trading platforms. 
Yeah, and, and to add to that, you, you know, it, you can begin to prepare, like Alan said, he just put in a thousand. So when you put in a thousand, you know, you might want to, you know, just make sure you, because I know <clears throat> Alan spoke about having buying power, you know, there before you should leave some buying power. So I think this diversification is great. So like the other day I bought big digital and I wanted to go and say, you know, buy a thousand shares of it. And I thought differently of it. And I said, you know what, let me leave some money for other stocks that we may find out, hey, this stock may take off, you know? So instead of buying a thousand, you know, you know, it's way, it's $800, it's 800 shares off of what I really wanted, but, you know, I still went ahead and bought it. You know, just about 200 just to leave, you know, opportunity for other stocks. So one thing I know on the stock market, you have to have patience and not everything is going to fly up right away, you know, and even if it goes up, you, you're going to notice that when a price go up, it's still going to come back down for you to be able to buy more of that stock. You know, so you're, you're really not, some things you'll miss out, but just try your best to use patience because you'll be surprised. You know, I'll even use IDEX, which will, you know, I know Alan will talk more about. I'll use IDEX. Um, I Googled blockchain technology, you know, months ago, last year. And IDEX was one of them that came up. And I immediately started researching that stock and, and watching it. You know, and I had faith that that stock was going to do great things, you know, based on, you know, electric, you know, being the next big thing, you know, and they're part of that sector as well, you know, as well as the blockchain technology, you know, so that stock, I bought it under $2 and I bought 400 and, you know, 30 shares of 420 shares of it. And I haven't bought no more since. You know, because I'm just holding on to it. And that stock when um Alan, quote me if I'm right. I think it went to about five dollars, right? IDEX? Yeah. Well, no, it, IDEX it might have at one point, but right now it's at 318, but it, it should go up based on the earnings reported today. Yeah. Well, I know where it's at now, but I was saying it went. It went to I think five or five dollars and change. So um, the point I'm trying to make is it went from under $2 where I bought it to $5, but it came back down to where you're saying it's at right now, but it did come back down to $2 and change. So it, it went up to where you're saying it's at right now. So I was trying to you know, let everyone know that even when you buy a stock low and you have 420 shares like I have, and it goes to $5 and I still kept my 200 and I mean, my 420 shares and it went back down to two something which it dropped on the three you know and now it's going back up over three you know and alan you always say you don't lose when your stock comes down you know because right. you're not at a loss you're just down so you know that's the way to look at your stocks if you're a long-term investor you know and you know that a stock has great potential potential to you know bring you millions or thousands, you know, be patient with it. And that's what I'm doing with IDEX. And I've been in it for almost, almost a year, you know, and it's similar to FTFT, you know, Alan, I know you have some information about FTFT as well, you know, that, you know, people are talking about, you know, so I had these stocks before anybody was talking about it all because of research. So I mentioned before that that's why this group is so important because we, we are finding things before anybody else really know about them. And when I say anybody else, I mean like, you know, people that's trying to get into stocks. It's, it's not, there's not a lot of people that really have the information that they need in order for them to be successful on the stock market. And this group gives us an opportunity to research and get in, you know, sooner than later or early in the early stage of its development. 
Yeah, what you say is true. And what you said about IDEX, that was within a three month period. Um, if we look back in January, it went up to $5. February, it dropped, dropped to around $2.93. And then it, now it's around $3 and change. Yes, it is. So, as far as what Savannah is saying, um, really, I didn't have too much to say about IDEX, but what I did want to tell or advise the listeners, well, you know, I try to listen to everything, you know, do my research, uh, social media, everything. I listen to rumors. I don't rule out any information. Um, basically, they're, they're forecasting the market to be in a cor correction within the next, well, they're expecting this correction to last the next two weeks. So basically, if there's any plays that you want to get into, right now's the time to get into it. Like FTFT, they just had a catalyst or some big news. They're trying to get, or they might have bought uh, 20,000 mining machines. So just like what Savon says, it's real talk. Me and Savon, or Savon was telling me about FTFT while everyone was celebrating Christmas. Now you have a lot of these guys on YouTube, they're talking about it now. And I'm like, man, we were talking about this four months ago, <laughs> you know, months ago. So right now FTFT is $6.12. So now they're saying this is forecasted. This is what they're saying. This is forecasted to be as high as $12. And that's just the beginning. So this stock can double. Again, it's $6.12 now. This is something that if you have the money, you want to get in now before the market comes out of the correction, right? IDEX just reported earnings today, and it's huge earnings. So last year, well, year a year, two years ago, around this time, they were at $2.7 million. Now they're at $19.5 million. And that's just their EV revenue. That's not their charging station revenue. That's not other companies or businesses they acquired. So this company is growing. Their stock is getting beat up right now a little bit. But again, at $3.18, this is the time to get in. Um, Savon says he has 430 shares. I believe in it even more. I have 730 shares. You know, right, right before the market closed, I, I, I text Savon. I said, hey, you're at 3.59, I just bought 100 more shares. You know, because I saw the news and I hurry up and I, I grab some more shares because I know after hours, this stock is going to move. You know, again, this stock is very cheap right now. And a big catalyst is coming out. And Savon reminded me, Biden is drafting, drafting an infrastructure bill. That mean, I didn't get deep into it. And I apologize for not being fully prepared. But a lot of that money is going into EV. A lot of that money is going to uh, manufacturing, roads, all this stuff, you know? So what stocks are you think, what, what stocks do you think are gonna really bounce back with all this money uh, Biden's administration is about to pump in? Manufacturing, they're gonna need the materials. Where are they gonna get them from? You know, they have to ship them, you know? So everything, everything is gonna take a big bounce. And that's why I'm telling everyone now if there are some plays that you want to get into right now is the time to get in, because if you wait a little bit longer, it's, it's going to be to the point where you can't afford it or it's not going to be worth it. Or you won't be able to get enough shares to, to, to make a big profit. So right now is the time. Right now that Biden announced the infrastructure bill is about to be rolled out and he's going to pump millions and millions into EV stocks. EV stocks are getting beat up right now. But that's why me and Savon constantly talk about being diversified. Don't have all your money just in EV, right? EV is nice, but don't have all your money in the EV. You got to have a diversified portfolio. Have some Bitcoin, have some uh, FinTech, have some NFT, have some EV, have some charging stations, have some um, marijuana stocks. <clears throat> have some coins. We have a, Do a Dogecoin. You know, and Savon, we talked about Voyager. He told me about that today. And I said, Savon, hey, I just added about 1400 today. I can't buy it today. I have to buy it tomorrow because I have to wait till that money's available because it's an OTC stock. But that's all I wanted to really touch base on. And, you know, let me know if anybody has any questions.
Any questions, guys? Okay, don't hear no one with any questions. Um, I'll touch just a little bit on, you know, what Alan just said in the end there about di diversification. And I can say diversification creates balance, you know, and what I mean by that is just, just imagine balancing your checkbook, you know, balancing your life or just having a balance, you know, di diversification creates balance. So from the moment I got into the stock market, my portfolio in the beginning in by that is I bought stocks, you know, my first couple of stocks that I bought, the first stock I bought was Nintendo. So that was gaming. Then the next couple of stocks I bought after that was because of um, Edwin, my business partner, you know, we, um, we researched PPE, you know, equipments, you know, because of COVID everyone, you know, wearing their mask and, you know, whatever they needed you know, to protect themselves, so protective gear. So that's the next thing I got into. You know, I started just, you know, realizing, hey, look what's happening. And that's what we need to invest in. So we got into PPE. So what I realized was, okay, get into PPE, but it can't just be all about PPE, you know, because that's not the only thing going on. Yes, there's COVID, but what else is happening? And this YouTube channel is actually a, is an amazing thing because if you get caught up in something, you're gonna miss something. Never wanna put all your eggs in the one basket. And I'm, a, I'm an example that you can use of making mistakes in the beginning. And it wasn't huge mistakes, but those mistakes were made for me to live and learn and invest better. You know, And that's why I'm coming to the YouTube and sharing. So people listening out there, you're not making the same mistakes um, that I've made. Yes, you can learn from your mistakes, but if someone can come to you and give you the recipe, don't try to put a different recipe to, you know, to how you make that cheesecake. You know, if you want to add a few little things here and there, but you, if you liked how it tastes, you can't add anything. You got to take the exact recipe, you know? So basically when I got into PPE, yes, those stocks are doing well, but what I recognize and I kick myself all the time for it, but I realize, you know what? You can kick yourself. Lots of people are gonna keep kicking themselves. So don't keep kicking yourself. It happened. The only thing you could do is do better and move on. And I'm doing better now. So basically bought the PPE stocks. And what I recognized was, wait, hold on. I'm buying protective gear, but hold up. We're home. We're home every day. I remember talking to Ed and Rod about this. We're, we're in the house. What else could be going on while we're in the house? Wait, hold on. We on it. Oh, it's called Zoom. Guys, why are we not Zooming? Like, that makes no sense. We're buying PPE stocks, but we're not buying Zoom. I'm like, wow. Zoom is how much? Oh, Zoom is like $50. And we're, we're still not buying Zoom. And we're buying PPE. And I'm like, whoa, we need to buy Zoom. Wake up next week. I mean, wait, a week later, Zoom is $100. Okay, two months later, Zoom is four hundred dollars. Wow, look how many time we waste not buying Zoom. We didn't diversify. We didn't buy Zoom. Then it went from Zoom to oh, Ed kept telling me about um, uh, what's the name of it? Um, forgot the name. But there was so much opportunities while we were home. You know, even um, Netflix. I mean, all these stocks were flying up, you know, and they wasn't being bought. And a lot of them was low. And I could use this one, DocuSign. I don't remember when DocuSign was like, just call it a dollar to how we could have got into that thing when we were home. Just call it that DocuSign was so affordable for us to come out and be like, oh my God, we got this much money. And we just let DocuSign grow. Now everything you do on the internet that you need to sign something, you just get it signed, DocuSign. I just applied something the other day. It's like, up, oh, DocuSign. So we just have to look at what's happening around us and know that there's more than one thing that's happening around us. It's not just coronavirus that's happening around us. What's happening is we're staying home. What's happening is we're back out again. 
there's always something for us to pay attention to get into. There's the EVs. Just look at it. Overall, just pay attention to what's going on and diversify and invest in it all. That's it. Every time me and Alan research something and we get into something, it's like, oh my God, there's something else. And sometimes you feel like, oh, I can't get in all those things. So what I do, I go back to the drawing table and I say, okay, I could have a thousand shares of IDEX, but do I really need a thousand shares of IDEX? Because I know Alan's gonna call me tomorrow with another play that, oh, we don't wanna miss that one either. So instead of me having a thousand share of I, shares of IDEX, I might just say, you know what, let me get 400 shares of IDEX. That, that sh if anything, if push comes to shove, I'm in it with a good amount of shares. And if that thing really blow, 400 shares, great. So I get into other plays with the other 600 shares and I put, may put two in one. And Alan said, hey, don't miss this one, man. I put two in that one. So instead of having a thousand shares in one stock, I spread it out over 10 stocks. And you'd be surprised how today IDEX might be down. And tomorrow, I mean, you were down today. And tomorrow, Zoom was up like crazy. So let's, let's just say you had $20,000 in your account. And it went down to 15 because IDEX went down. And you're like, man, I, IDEX went down and you're down on yourself. And then the next day, you had like 500 shares of Zoom. And Zoom went so far up and your know, 15,000 turned into $30,000 $30, in one day. That's what that diversification can bring you. You might be... Because I'm looking at my portfolio now, and Alan mentioned it. Electric EV stuff, oh my God, they were taking a beating. And I look at my portfolio and I'm like, with my mouth wide open, I'm like, you're really going to beat me up like that to where my account was at? I'm like, I got this. I right, beat me up. It's cool. As a matter of fact, I'm going to work a little harder and buy more. That's the way I looked at it. Then I say, you know what? Do I need to really buy more or just leave it where it's at? It's gonna come back. Just buy new things. What is, what's new that's happening around me? Buy into that. And now I'm looking and I'm like, I'm glad I bought into those because the money that came down, it's going up again and it's making new highs. And I'm like, I see how this thing worked. Then I'm looking and I'm saying, wait, hold up. If EVs is taking a hit and I have other stocks of a hit as EVs, but overall they're taking a hit. And I'm saying, wait, hold up. Bitcoin didn't even really take off yet. It's been around the same and coming down and around the same and coming down like 50,000, coming down to 40, 60,000, coming back down in the 50s. And I'm like, yo, what the heck is Bitcoin doing, man? But I'm like, okay. It ain't really manifest itself yet. But I'm saying, what's going to happen if Bitcoin goes towards 100,000? And I just use my patience. I'm like, wow. My portfolio is looking great because of diversity. That's it. And, and I'm proud to be thinking like that on a daily basis, man. I, I look at my account and I'm like, Wow, this is amazing. This is wonderful. This is beautiful. And I don't worry about where my account goes. In the last seven, six, seven months, I stopped worrying about what my account is doing because I did so much research the way I'm like, if my account is right here right now and ain't nothing really happening, what's going to happen when something is really happening? And it's because of diversification. All of these plays that we research and we have, it's a no brainer. Like I'm seeing it happen right now. It's like, they're just waiting to explode. You know, but, but I'll stop talking there, man, because a lot of people don't have patience. And for, for some reason, I don't know where I got it from, but for some reason I have all the patience in the world and I'm glad I do. 
I spoke to my son this morning and we were talking and I'm saying, man, don't wait till I'm dead and gone. Capitalize on what I know now. Because what I'm teaching my son, it's like, I actually wish that it was taught to me. I wish that I would have been told to invest in Apple, Microsoft, around that time when I was young enough to, you know, to know, hey, young man, pay attention to your future. You need to know this. Could have It could have come from parents. It could have come from friends. That's what we're doing right now. A lot of this information ain't even coming from parents. It's coming from this YouTube channel. It's coming from friends. When I'm talking to strangers, they don't know me. We got people on this chat that I've met. They don't know me. They just met me and I'm trying to help them. You know, so the opportunity that's there right now, it's being shared on here. You know, don't kick yourself in the foot later. You know, we're sharing and all you have to do is do your own research and get in. You know, and I'll say this and I'll stop talking. A lot of I have a lot of passion towards what I do. It's it's a blessing to wake up every day and know what I know now. You know, it's just a I just feel great because I feel like I'm working on generational wealth. Whereas before, I wasn't thinking anything about no generational wealth. I mean, it was in the back of my mind, but I didn't know that I'm doing what I'm doing right now. You know, I wake up every single day with patience. I wake up every single day sacrificing. When people ask me for money, I used to be really given and I'm still given. But now I look at myself, I'm like, I'm not given a dime. And I and I become like that lately because I'm saying to myself, okay, so if I have a thousand dollars right now and a couple of people come to me with their sob stories about why they need my help because they know I'm helpful. I look at it like, okay, I'm hurting myself by giving what I really don't have because I really don't have it like that. That thousand dollars, I can actually invest that and make my money work for me. So the same people that's asking for me to help them right now, I look and I say, wait, hold on. Isn't it better for you to have more so you can help them better or, or create job opportunities by growing your company because you have the money to do so because you work hard so your money can work for you so you can create job opportunities for the same people that you've been helping with the little that you have. And of course, I still help people, but I just don't help as much as I used to because I realized that you have to take what you have and you have to invest it with your long-term plan of, listen, somebody else's burden is not mine. And you know what I find too? A lot of times when you take someone else's burden and give it back to them, they actually learn how to handle their own burden. And when you continue to help somebody else by taking on their burden, they count on you and they don't help themselves because they know you're going to help them. So am I going to sit there and be someone's crutch or am I going to let somebody figure out what they need to do? Because I look at myself as like the kind of help that I give, do I receive that? And if I'm not receiving it, am I, am I not going to get ahead? I'm still going to get ahead. Ever since I know myself and I haven't received the way that I have given, me not receiving never stopped me from getting where I'm going. If I needed a thousand dollars and I asked around and I didn't get it, that needing that thousand dollars have never stopped me from reaching where I'm going just because someone didn't give it to me. So I don't know if I'm blessed or what, but I've never had anything that I needed stop me from getting it. So it's either somebody gave it to me and I appreciated it or someone didn't have it to give to me and I found a way on my own. So I live and I learned that 
listen, I'm helpful, but there's a lot more that I could be doing by creating jobs, by letting my money work for me. And those same people that I've been helping, I can actually give them a great job. That's why we have the group. That's why Alan has become very, very important. And we haven't known each other that long, but I know for sure that with a group of people that's going to be blessed financially, we're going to be able to use our YouTube channel to help a lot of people. You know, and I'm proud. I'm proud to be having this opportunity to invest and to share with you guys so we can form a group of people who's going to be wealthy, you know, and be able to use our wealth to help people. But y'all gonna make me keep talking because y'all like to listen. But I don't wanna keep talking, guys. Hello? Savon, I wanted to ask a question. This is Alan. <clears throat> Yes. I wanted to know, does anyone in the room use Fidelity? I think Rod has Fidelity. I wish he would sign in to the thing. I don't know, Rod's out there in the chat. Rod, what's up, man? Sleepy? <laughs> I think Rod has Fidelity. I'm not sure, you know, I think so. I'm guessing he does. Yeah, the reason I was asking, because I may close the chase because of the restriction of tickers that they have on there, especially with OTC. So I was just thinking about a secondary account. And everyone's telling me good things about Fidelity. So I just wanted to know if we had any listeners. Rod around. has Fidelity. I wish you would sign in to the thing. I don't know, Rod's out there in the chat. Rod, what's up, man? Sleeping? <laughs> wow. I think Rod has Fidelity. I'm not sure. Double talking. Yes, he does. I wonder the who the reason I was asking because I may close the chase because of the restriction of tickers that they have on there, especially mm -hmm. with OTC. Mm -hmm. So I was just thinking about a secondary account. Okay. And everyone's telling me good things about Fidelity. So I just wanted to know if we had any listeners. Rod around. has Fidelity. I wish you would sign in to the thing. I don't know, Rod's out there in the chat. Rod, what's up, man? Sleeping? Who is that? Who, 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 Rod has Fidelity. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yes, I heard. The reason I was asking because I may close the chase because of the restriction of tickers that they have on there. So I should Alan, is that you? So I is that you repeating itself? No, that's not me. <laughs> all right, let me. me. All right, mine is paused, so it's not me. Someone has the YouTube playing in the background because YouTube has uh, a lot possible. Can you hear me? Oh, Rod? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's going on? Welcome, Punkified. <laughs> <laughs> no, I tried signing in earlier, but um, I didn't want to text you, and uh, so I just let you finish what you were, you know, what you were talking about, so. Oh. All right. Well, um, I wanted to continue, um, you know, uh, what Savan was talking about earlier. We did start uh, investing about a year ago because we... Um, we made a pack, you know, we already were uh, business partners, but we made a pack saying, like, let's come out of this um, COVID, you know, um, thing, um, you know, better than when we first, you know, got in. Because it's like we had opportunity, you know, I, I got laid off and um, I was sitting at home every day. He's like, hey, let's take this opportunity to learn, you know, from all this time that we have in our hands, start reading books, start doing research. And uh, yeah, we just started, like, you know, <laughs> looking into investing. And uh, that's how, you know, and, and then all of a sudden, Savon just started, he just started, like, going crazy with it. And um, I want to tell everyone, uh, one thing that I noticed that this group always um, talk about is um, do your research. One of the mistakes that I made in the beginning was, um, you know, I would just hear certain things, you know, just go by whatever people tell me and I'll run it and, and invest instead of researching what they were. And, and I ended up selling some of the, um, some of the stocks that are like real high right now that skyrocketed that I had bought under a dollar, around a dollar. But um, I used to work in North Dakota and I moved to Georgia and, you know, I, I was, um, you know, certain things I had to, uh, invest, you know, things I had to purchase. And I went and sold some of the stocks because of the move that I made. And then the great thing about Savon is he keeps his word. He's my business partner. And uh, we, we, now we, we're more like brothers. And he called me. He was like, Rod, um, 
you still have those stocks? I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, NFT, SOS, and all these different stocks. I'm like, no, I sold a lot of them because I, I moved. And <laughs> by him reminding me, and it, re you know, it made me go back and do research. And I, just, I started re researching them even more. And I bought a lot of, a lot of them you know, at, at a higher price. And I was very, you know, um, angry at myself for what I did. But, you know, things happen in life where you need, you know, you need to, like, make moves. But, um, but ever since, you know, I learned that lesson, every time, you know, we would talk, I would um, listen and um, I would do more research. And I, I just put on, hey, Alan. Yes. I've heard a lot of great things about you, man. Uh, and I've been paying attention. Uh, Savan, he really uh, believes in what you guys are doing. Um since Savan been talking about the NFT um, for the last few months now, I've been doing a lot of research and I've come across some NFTs. Um, what do you see in, you know, um, in the future, like um, what NFT, you know, what the... Um... So my, my question is, um, how, how do you see the NFT, you know, um, stocks, you know, um, where they might go in the future, what what they really are, because I'm still, you know, learning what you know what they are. I'm still I'm still learning what NFTs are. Because it's 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 pretty big. NFTs is is almost like a puzzle, you know. Um, but NFTs are going to be big. So when you say what I think about it in the future, I believe NFTs is the future. For example, NFT is going to take over the music business, right? Mm, okay. Mark Cuban did an interview, right? Because right now, I'm going to give you guys a perfect example. Kanye West, when he went on his rant about signing with these big labels, what was his problem? You know, ownership, right? He was saying, mm -hmm. these music artists make this music. They don't own the rights to their music, you know? What do you, you have that artist, uh, Taylor Swift. <laughs> someone bought her catalog and sold it. Michael Jackson, um, before he died, he owned the Beatles catalog, right? They were pissed off at it. You can look, you can look it up, right? A lot of these artists, they make millions of dollars, but a lot of them can't make billions because they don't own their music. The masters. Yeah, the masters. Correct. They, don't, correct. they don't own their masters. So NFTs is going to change the game, man, because NFTs is going to allow these artists to make their music and sell it as an NFT. And right, I could use a perfect example. Wu-Tang came out with, with an album, right? They came out with... I forgot what's that guy's name who came out with he he, he went to oh, prison. Oh, the HIV to... thing, the guy, the HIV thing, right? Right, correct. He came out with the medicine, whatever, and he got sued, went to prison. But he bought this one uh, Wu Tang album. Wu Tang made one album. No one else can get it. If you wanted to buy it, they sold it for a few hundred thousand. So there's one. No, no, no. I think it was like two million. He bought it for like two yeah. million or something like that. Yeah, it was two million. Yeah, I'm undershooting because I remember <laughs> the story, but. But that's basically like what NFTs are going to be like, right? Wu-Tang mm -hmm. did it, but they actually had to physically sell an album. NFTs, artists are going to be able to sell their music, right? And it's going to appreciate as an asset. So if I buy, if I buy one of uh, my favorite rappers or R&B artists song, it's going to gain value and I could resell it to you as an NFT, right? So, so, so NFTs are going to take over the music business. Is gonna take over the art business. It's gonna take over the sports business. Right now, I'm in a ticker, and um, Savan, you could put it in, or or someone could put it in in the in, in the chat. H O F V. H O F V. Yeah, H O F V is in Victor. All right, let me pull up my portfolio. Bear with me, because I want to give you the information. Since we got into NFTs, bear with me. You know, so funny. I actually, <laughs> I actually purchased a few of that um, about a week ago. When um, Savannah has a saying, you know, uh, well, we used to have a saying last year: the teamwork makes the dream works. Mm -hmm. And because Savannah kept on banging on the table NFT, NFT, I went and started doing research and what it really, you know, is. And you explained it very clearly. And um, and I actually came across another one called Atari. And it's actually under a dollar right now. And you, everybody, you know, anybody that's, you know, <laughs> over 30 years old probably remembers Atari uh, back in the 80s. Yes. And I guess they're probably getting into NFT. So that's why I asked you guys, because it's under a dollar right now. And there uh -huh. was a stock that Savon. So what's that stock you were, you were, you were talking about? The NFT stock that was like $5 and went up to $60. 
in a week, like a week later. Oh, you're, ta- you're, pro- talking about you're probably talking about TCAT, TKA. Yep. Is that the yep. one? The art, yeah, the art NFT from oh, China. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was $5 <laughs> when someone was talking about it. Not even two weeks later, it went to 60. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, actually, when me, when me and Savon talked about it, it was actually $7. $7 when I looked at it, right? Mm-hmm. And then it went up to $60, and I was kicking myself in the butt. So don't kick yourself, uh, Rob, because we all make mistakes. I have sh- sold some stocks that me and Savon uh, discussed. And I'm like, okay, let me take some profits. I'm up $1,400. And Savon called me. He's like, well, you know, are you still in this? Because it's shooting up. I'm like, no, I sold it last week. <laughs> you know, no, that's, and, that's, and part of, that's part of life. It's going to happen. Correct. You're not going to win 14, it all. There's too many stocks. Correct. I took 1400 but I could have made, say, 5000 you know, like, I had one stock. I I made a fourteen fourteen fifty profit off mm-hmm. of it. Um, SPRT. Savon told me about that, or we discussed that, like around December. That was one of the first stocks I got into. Mm-hmm. And one of my cousins texted me. He's like, "Yo, are you checking your account? This thing is going crazy." So I checked it and I I sold it, took profit, but I bought back in at the dip. You know, because I wanted to be in the play. I just wanted to take some profit so I could buy some other plates. But the and, stock I was mm-hmm. sorry, go ahead. Oh no, no, continue. Sorry about that. Go ahead. No, no. Um, and Savon, you could put this in the chat. The stock I was referring to is called H O F V, and Rod was referring to as well. Right now it's sitting at five dollars. Mm-hmm. Basically, it's a company that works hand in hand with uh NFL players, right? I'm gonna read you the description of the company, right? Hall of Fame Resort and Entertainment Company, formerly Golden Point Acquisition Group. It is a resort and entertainment company. The company uh, leverages popularity of professional football and players in partnership with Pro Football Hall of Fame. The company also owns Johnson Controls Hall of Game Village. The Johnson Control Hall of Game of Village is a multi-use sports entertainment and media destination centered around Pro, Pro Football Hall of Fame campus. So this is a company that's in the entertainment business, the media business, Right, and they also mm-hmm. entering NFT business. Um, you know, so funny you bringing that up. Look, look up YVR. That falls kind of like very, that is very similar to one um, the one you just talked about, and that one you is know, that. I looked at this one too. I looked at this one too. I just didn't buy in yet. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, uh, Liquid Media. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of similar to the last one you just uh, explained, and it's an NFT. So I was like, you know what? <laughs> I jumped on it, and I hope to like get more as the weeks go by. And I hope it doesn't go up until I get about <laughs> about a hundred of it. So you know, but you never know what might happen. Hey, P- hey, P- people! A lot of people got the stimulus, man. So you, you got a little bit of extra, you know. <laughs> but I would recommend everyone, uh, you know, do your do your research. We're not experts, you know, do your own research. So what I usually do is, well, you know, what we do is, um, you know, we talk to each other, you know, come to the channel, you know, get ideas and then, you know, just research. All I did was, um, it, it's not rocket science. All I did was just Google, what is NFT? I was like, what is that? And read up on it. And then I took the notes that um, Savan gave me with that, that art um, stock from China that went up to $66. And I was like, hold up, what else is uh, attached to this? And that's, uh, that's how I found Liquid Media, uh, the YVR one. That's how I found the one, the last one you had talked about, about the, the football one mm-hmm. in the entertainment industry. So there's going to be a lot of NFTs coming up. And in the Atari, everybody knows how big the game industry is. Right now, you have kids playing in competitions, winning millions of dollars. Yeah, I have three kids, man. They're, and we talked about it a few, few calls ago when Roblox went public. My my nine year old daughter, who's about to be ten, she's addicted to Roblox. You know, that's why you say to that diversify your your you know. Uh, I mean, so you, yeah, I have stocks in uh, robotics. Uh, oh yeah, uh, definitely artificial intelligence because that's definitely the future. I have a few oh, stocks. Yeah. There, so. so anything that has to do, you know, with um, you know, just think about it. Elon Musk, he talks about that all the time, merging the human mind with um AI. So, so it, it's right. not. Um, it's not a movie anymore. Those things are becoming reality. One of the biggest things, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of the biggest things right now, Rod, is also not just EVs and all the NFTs, is payment platforms. Me and um, Savon was talking about that today, man. Look is it at, pay? Look at pay A Y D. He told me. Yeah, he yeah, told me. Yeah, about yeah, it. yeah. That's one of them that I'm gonna. I'm gonna you see Savon. I listen. I listen. Just so, I, I pay attention. <laughs> I remember. Exactly yeah, there you, you go. Going. See, there you go. So payment platforms, and Savon can attest to this. It's big right now. All these. Big banks saying, man, I hate Bitcoin and whatever. And, you know, but but slowly but surely they're pivoting. They're like, we have no choice, you know, because it's taken over. You know, I, I'm investing in another company called uh, Humble. They bought another company called TSPND. They just changed a ticker last week to Humble. TSPND? Oh. Yeah, yeah. But the ticker symbol changed. The ticker oh, wow. symbol now... Because they 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 merged with another company, they bought them out. So the ticker symbol now is H M B L. Hold on one second, H M B L. Yeah. Uh, is it on uh, TD or Robinhood? Uh, it's on TD. Rod, right, that's what me, you, and Ed was talking about the other day when um yeah. I was mentioning Alan. Alan, that's why he came on and saying great. I said great things about you. Because when I'm talking to people and you send me something, I always give credit where it's due. So when I'm talking to these guys, you know, I'm feeding them information based off of the fact that they need. And Rod, so you're going to learn, Alan, that Rod will ask the same thing. He's probably going to ask you about the same ticker about 100 times. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. And I'll talk about it about a hundred times and I'll add a few more shares as well. Hey, that's so, fine. Cause sometimes my, you think about it, we're all busy with everyday life. So you talking about it a hundred times will remind you to like, get back, get your focus, you know, <laughs> you, know um, you know, focus on what, you know, what you need to do. Um, wow. You got like my brain is like running right now. Um, you know, so funny, like last year when we first started like investing, uh, oh yeah, wait, his, okay, that's what I forgot. Okay, um, Alan, I bet you know about genius, right? With uh, what just yeah. happened with you. Okay, l- l- let me ask you. Let me ask you something, Savon. Go on your text. What did I tell you today? Um, genius. Well, I don't. I don't even have to go in there. I already put it in the chat. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it says text- genius. Genius brand is rumored to be getting into NFTs. <laughs> that's what I text Savon today. Well, here's the funny thing about that, Alan. Me and Savon, we had the genius stock about a year now. <laughs> okay, so we, man, I so had you guys in it. like about 29 cents. I think that's when I first got it about a year ago. And I always kept mm-hmm. it because I believed in it. You know what? One of the main reasons was, um, I, you know, I was researching it. It was about for kids watching the cartoon and it started to have all these different figurines. And um, I was like, huh, it almost looked like something like, you know, Cartoon Network, you know, would do. And then months later, it, they said like Arnold Schwarzenegger bought like 10,000, 20,000 shares. I was like, what? I was like, okay, I'm really jumping on this one. <laughs> I don't have many genius shares. I, I'll be honest. I don't have okay. many because I just jumped in um, because it. of the news. Um, mm-hmm. But I knew about it for a while. I, but I, I'm just getting into genius, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Sooner or later, man. Sooner or later. But one last thought because, you know, I don't want to, you know, no, go ahead. Um, Rod, Rod, before you jump into that stock, I mm-hmm. want to mention this. We're, we're not perfect. You know, none of us are. None and the reason us. I'm saying that is because sometimes you can get information from somewhere and it may make you not invest in something that you believe in. And the reason why I say that is because um, those guys are doing a great job giving people information and we all love them for what they're doing. And um, what's their name? The guys that you know um, give out the stock information. Oh, your 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 own leisure. What's the name? Oh, uh, invest. I think it's invest. Or, oh no no no. Earn your leisure. Earn your leisure. Okay, mm-hmm. so those guys are doing a wonderful job. So I want to put that out there. They they are. But um, I remember listening to them one time, and they were knocking Genius Brand, and nothing against them for doing that. You know, they didn't believe in Genius Brand. But I'll, I want to put it out there that, listen, I'm not perfect. I can tell somebody, hey, don't do this, don't do that. But it's not about me. It's about what you believe. 
And ever since Rod had said he believed in Genius Brand, if I believe in you as a business partner, um, whether through all the ups and downs, the storms, the anything that happens, I'm a person that once I go all in, I'm going to find ways to make things as great as it could be, even when it seems rocky. And and I've been through those things with, with Rod and Ed. You mm-hmm. know, I'm not a jump ship type of person. I'm a person where the ship's sinking and I'm going to go in the water and, and figure it out, even if the shark's down there. I might try to kill the shark. You know, that that's just how I am. Nothing scares me. Nothing stops me from just giving it my all. And we all make mistakes, you know, but I'm always going to put it out there that no matter what somebody say about a stock, you have to do your own research and you have to believe in what you believe in, you know, and genius brand just keeps on coming up, but I normally don't hear good things across the board that much about it, but it would be quite funny if they actually get into the NFT as it's rumored and their stock blow up. And this is why you don't just take people's word for it. This is why you have to be careful what you actually say, because you might stop somebody from, from growth, you know? So I just want to put that out there because I know Rod has always loved Genius Brand. And there's another (laughs) company that, there's another company that he's always loved. And I think we're going to talk about it right now. We're going to talk about it. I knew you were going to get to it, but, um, but I, I take that serious before you go, Rod. I take that dead serious. Mm-hmm. Um, same thing with you, Alan. I take it dead serious when you, oh, CTRM, CTRM is like a song. And I do believe one day we're going to wake up, you know, and I sold some CTRM and I'm like, yo, Alan, keep singing that song right there, man. So listen, when somebody believes in something, don't knock them. So. Okay. Uh, wow. No, no, no. But uh, the most important thing that Savan said, um, and you guys have stated this multiple times uh, over the weeks, is um, number one, do your own research. And um, number two, you're going to run into a stock that you're going to believe in. If you believe in it and you kind of, let's just say you probably understand it way more. Because sometimes, you know, we're all going to run into something we understand more than the, the next person. You know, we'll be like, you know what? I did my research. This is what I read. This is what I see. And you're just going to hold on to it like it's your kid. <laughs> <laughs> and just baby it because you really believe in it. It might, hey, it might work in your favor, it might not, but it's, that's just how the human mind works. We just believe in something, you just hold, want to hold on to it because you're like, wow, I see this going somewhere. So um, I wanted to talk about COPS tops. I was doing research in the oil industry and um, I came across this. So, Alan, uh, can you please uh, look into this uh, as we, uh, um, uh, as I, you know, talk about this real quick? Sure, I'll put the ticker in now. Yeah, T O P S. So what I did was, um, when I researched it, if you look, uh, if you look at it like five years ago, the numbers made no sense to me. I was like, huh? And what what they actually do is uh, they ship oil across the globe. And Alan, did you see the numbers yet? Yes, it's at a dollar ninety five right now. Where was it at five years ago? Let me get you. Bear with me. That that changed, Rod, because they they um don't forget they um did a reverse split, so he's not. Oh no no yeah yeah, yeah. I lost a lot of money because of the reverse split. Yeah no I'm just, no I was just trying to show him where it was five years ago. No, but what I'm saying is he's not gonna see it. He's not because when they did their reverse split, they didn't keep those millions that it was showing us. Are you serious? Hold on, let me see tops. Yes. Wow. I don't recall seeing that. Oh no, it's there. It's there. It is. Yeah, it's there. It, it, it actually shows that they were above six dollars around 2016. No, not six. See, that's not six dollars, Rod. What, Rod? What do you see? Is go go to go to September um 2016, five years ago. Okay, it's not letting me go back that far on huh. my. You, you you know why? Because I'm using a phone. I'm not actually on the computer. Got it. But okay, I'm so, pretty sure if I sign on to the computer, it'll let me see a full chart. Well, what happened is um, years ago, uh, each share was over like $8 million. So I'll let people, you know, people go do their own research because everybody, uh, well, people that, you know, um, understand oil is uh, the number one traded commodity in the world. 
I know we're, you know, we, we're going into, uh, into a different direction with um, electric cars and everything, but at the same time, oil is not going to go away that fast. So what I did was um, I, you know, looked into it a little bit deeper and I found out that they bought brand new ships um, last year. I think they're supposed to get it this year. So think about it. When we get out of this COVID thing, people are going to be traveling, you know, even more. So I'm hoping that, you know, this thing gets back to where it was. Even if you have like five, 10, 20 shares, I'm not saying it will go back to millions, millions, millions of dollars a share, but from where it was, I'm like, you know what, this thing might come back. And Savan did say that, you know, companies do change. Like, look how genius might go into NFTs. You never know. It might go into electric cars. Because yeah, if that yeah, company well, used to be millions of dollars, you know, they might change their whole business portfolio. Yeah. Yeah, Rod, what you say is important. So this is a good stock to watch because a lot of companies have to pivot. Just like a few calls ago, I, I was I was praising a stock called ZOM, ZOM. But after you know, I, I was I wasn't at a loss. I was still in the profit mode. So I, I pivoted out of that play and sold it and got into another play because ZOM mm -hmm. sold um, uh, you know, medicine for, for dogs and cats. But I said, you know what? I need a company that's more diverse, you know, especially with what's going on. So that's why I pivoted out of that play. But I was in a profit, you know? But what you say is true because what was the biggest deal? What was the biggest problem we had last year? No, sorry, uh, last year around this time. No one can find sanitizer, right? So what did mm. all these liquor companies start doing? They start making sanitizer. But you make rum and you make um, vodka and you make alcohol people get drunk off <laughs> off of. But now you're starting to make sanitizer. So as a, so what you, I'm just saying that not to interrupt you, but I'm just saying that what you say is true. This company ships oil, but they can start shipping something else because once Biden roll out that infrastructure bill, which it will roll out, um, mm -hmm. the shipment is going to go crazy. Because we're not going to be able to have enough materials. You know, Ford, yeah. Ford, I talked about this a few calls ago, semiconductor shortage. Now it's hitting more car uh, car manufacturers. Ford has shut, shut down a, a plant recently because they didn't have enough semiconductor chips. So now wow. part of Biden's plan is to pump money into semiconductors companies. There's one I was looking up. I didn't send it to Savon because I got tied up, but I will send it and, you know, but but it's ninety dollars a share right now. But I'm pretty sure that thing's gonna hit like two hundred fifty, three hundred dollars a share, because right now every car manufacturer is suffering because of the the lack of semiconductor chips. Oh, I did see that report. You're right. I did see that report. It's not enough. It's not enough. Mm -hmm. It's not enough. Right there. And to jump in right there, are they really suffering, or is there a built up demand? <laughs> I'm just saying. Probably a built up demand. Someone's build probably sitting right. somewhere build in the cave. Demand. Someone's probably sitting somewhere in the cave with a, the world supply. <laughs> so <laughs> I wouldn't put it past you, man. That is too funny. Okay. They cre wow. they created they created demand. I used to wake up at Walmart to try to get Lysol at 6 45 in the morning. And people used to run there trying to get the Lysol. It's like it's true. Were they running out of Lysol or were they just putting limited amounts? to make people go crazy over Yeah, there. just like toilet paper, you're right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. so, the game that's being played, you're right. Yeah, just, just know that we live in an imperfect world and yeah. the things that happens in this world, we can't, we can't question it. We just gotta go with the flow and we gotta learn how to deal with it. You know, there's gonna be things that happen that we just can't really control. And when they happen, you're just gonna have to deal. It's like when we go into the stock market, we know what it's about. But a lot of people don't take the time to understand that the stock market is like the world. Once you live in it, it's the people around you that's causing the problems that's in the world. It's not the world causing the problems. The world can't do anything to anybody. It's the people that's doing stuff. So when you have people running the world, it said it, men and women cannot govern themselves. But we try to, we have a government. Again, men and women cannot govern themselves, but we have a government. So what does that mean? They're trying. So is anything in this world that they provide for us perfect? No. Is the stock market perfect? No. 
Is there obstacles in there? Yes. So at the end of the day, do I believe anything that I heard? No. Do I believe anything that I hear? No. We all we all have that saying. We all know that saying that says, "Mind your business." And I, I'm gonna use myself, you know, as an example. About a year, well, year, yeah, about a year ago, you know, when I was really into IG, every morning, one of the first things I used to do was like was the first thing I used to do when I would pick up my phone when I wake up, check my IG, check my likes and everything, you know, because you know, that's what we, you know, a lot of us do nowadays, right? But nowadays, you know what I do every morning when I pick up my phone when my alarm goes off to go to work. Check my uh, check my stocks. You check that pre you check that pre market. <laughs> <laughs> yep, every morning like clockwork. The first thing that I do is check my stocks because I'm minding my business, and I'm like, IG's not making me any money, so <laughs> let me check my stock. You you know why, Rob? You know why? Because the American dream is to make money while you sleep. So yes, if you just sir. wake up. That's the American dream. If you just wake up and you know your stocks are going up and they're doing good, you're like, man, I just made money while I was sleeping. That's the American dream. Feeling. That's one. That's no, no. That's one of the best feelings in the world. Exactly. That's one of the best things. Yeah. <laughs> you know. You know what's the greatest feeling? Oh Lord. <laughs> no. No. On the line of what you guys are saying, one of the greatest feelings is to know that, like for instance. Alan did it, where he went and he bought 700 and something shares of IDEX. And let's just say you wake up tomorrow morning and with the great news that happened and IDEX just goes to like $200. And we've seen a lot of stocks do that, but I'm just putting it out there like that. That's the greatest feeling when you have a ton of shares and you know, oh my God, I'm glad I bought those things. Look at that stock. So I'm using that as an example because the more shares you have of something that's really low and it blows up, trust me, you're going to be living in a different world. Same world, but you done put yourself in a different category now. Now you can choose, you know, what your life can really be like. Because believe it or not, when you don't have it, the struggles, it affects you. You know, it really does. And money, money is not everything. But again, we live in a world where you need it. You know, things are done to even make that money. If you're willing to go and work nine to five, knowing that you really don't want to do that, but you get up every day for umpteen years and do the same thing every day or five days out of the week, and you really don't even want to really do that. Think of, think of how many people really struggle with getting up every day and going to a nine to five, knowing that they will rather be home to raise their kids. Do you, do you really think people want to work nine to five? I would say it's almost like you're forced to do it because you have no choice. But do you really have no choice? But it's being put out there like you have no choice to do that. You know, so life is what you make it. It really is. So Vaughn, you had a question that just popped up. Um, it's on the Zoom chat. <clears throat> it's on the Zoom. I, th I think uh, the question asks, are you in riot? Oh I'm man, can I answer that? So has been banging the table in riot for months. <laughs> <laughs> You want me to start a riot? I did a year ago. <laughs> yep. Uh, yes, he has. <laughs> so that answer the question? Who who asking that? Because I don't see it. Yeah, it. It popped up and disappeared really quick. But I believe... Sure. I'm not sure who asked it. I think it said a name, Lena, but it disappeared really quick. Okay. Huh. All right. Yeah. Well, I don't see it, but oh, it from Bell, from Bell, uh, Bell, yeah, Bell? It, yeah it, it, it's still there. You have to go to the chat and you can see it. From Bell. Yeah, I want to say from Bell. Uh, from who? 
from Miss from Wall Allen. That's what she just raised her hand. <laughs> okay. Oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on, let me go back. She raised her hand. Oh, <laughs> I know who asked that. <laughs> okay. You said right now I'm hoping SOS at FTFT does what Riot is doing right now. <laughs> I see you now raising your hand. All right, so yes, I am in Riot. That I I create. Oh, look at her raising hand. I created a Riot years ago. So basically, when I started researching on blockchain technology, I went into Robinhood and I typed in blockchain technology, and Riot was actually the number one stock that came up. So when it came up, I believe it was about $3 and change at that time. And then below Riot, it was um, FTFT, below FTFT was IDEX and, and so on and so on, the list went on. And I began to invest in all of those stocks. And that's when I told my business partner, which is Rod is on right now and Ed. And yes. I told him, hey guys, it's not 5G because everybody was on the 5G, that's the next thing, you know, 5G, invest in 5G, that's gonna hit big. And I, I just listened while I was at home and paid attention. And like Rod mentioned, I said to these guys, I said, listen, we've never had an opportunity like this to stay home because we have to and just do our research with what's going on. And that's what I did. You know, and call it what it is, Rod, you know, because it's lesson learned. You know, when you got into the stock, you you didn't want to return to work. You didn't, you know, and like most people, if you have an opportunity to be home and make some money, you're not going to want to return to work with the opportunity that's there. But I knew and I try to keep the, I try to keep these guys grounded that, listen, don't get into day trading. Don't don't listen to what everybody say about quick money. You know, and of course, Rod works hard. You know, he's into oil and he, he, and he lived in North Dakota, like he said, and I, I felt his pain. But a lot of times if you go and have surgery on something, guess what? The pain is going to exist. You're not going to get rid of that pain the next day. You can take all the pills you want to take. You're gonna, it's going to come back. Those pills, that pain is going to go away for a little bit and come right back. So I'm... I was trying to tell them guys or tell Rod especially, listen, you don't have the type of money to day trade. So it doesn't make sense, you know, but it's lesson learned. But I, I already knew that from building a program, from starting a program from scratch with nothing. I already knew, you know, that Rod was barking up the wrong tree because if you don't, you have to have 25,000 to day trade. So I needed to find the stocks that these guys can get in and build from the ground up and be patient with it. But, you know, Rod, it is what it is. I call it what it is. And you know, I throw blows. And a lot of times they're good blows because they're facts. You know, I listen to facts that people tell me. How do I recognize that they're facts? Because when somebody's talking to me passionately, I understand. When you're talking to me recklessly, I can't understand you. But when you're putting passion behind what you're saying, you're going to get me to listen. And if it's one thing about me, they can tell when I'm passionate about something because I'm going to keep going on and on and on and on. It's up to you for you to listen to it because you know why I keep going on and on and on and on? If I'm shooting basketball for years and I see that it's going in, what can somebody tell me any different than what I've been doing? I train myself to do this. You're going to tell you, I can't tell Steph Curry how to shoot the ball. He already figured that out. So I felt like I figured out what's going on. And I figured out, guess what? I ain't got 25 grand to be sitting there trying to day trade. Rod, do you? Doesn't make sense. So I just got into what's happening. And I said, hey, blockchain technology is where it's at. And Riot came up and we're part of a stock group, um, me and Rod and Ed. Um, and we've been, that stock group got about a million people in there. And I remember one time being in the stock group and um, somebody mentioned Riot and immediately somebody said, hey, don't mess with Riot because day traders be on Riot. 
So that turned a lot of people from not investing in Riot. And after I recognized that, I was like, listen, I will never tell somebody what to do with a stock. Because everybody got to do their own research. It's not my job to determine if somebody should get in or out of a stock. And I remember they turned off a lot of people from getting that stock. Riot is one of the top um, mining companies right now. And guess what? They were number one when I searched them. And they still number one right now. And you know how many people in that group missed that? Just because somebody huddered, don't get into that. You know? Savon, I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, two questions, a combo question. What do you do to determine whether a stock is a pump and dump? And second question is about a ticker. What do you think about SOS? All right, let's answer the first one first. How do I know that a stock is pump and dump? They were 100% right about Riot that the day traders was pumping and dumping it. They were 100% right. And what do I think about it? I'm still going to buy it because of the belief. You know what else is a pump and dump that we researched? SANP. That's not going to make me sell it because I live and learn from, the, uh, from, the, from what I saw from a couple of people not buying Riot. I would never, ever let a stock that I know is going to manifest itself. I would never let a day trader or day traders drive me out. You know, so what do I think about it? I think you should get into what you believe in. And I think you should understand that any stock that you get into could be great today and tomorrow it could be a pump and dump. That don't make you run out of it. If you believe in something, you stick with it. With what? SOS became a pump and dump. When you look, and so you ask me what I think about SOS, they're messing with it. What do you think about Bitcoin? They're messing with that too. We think about Ethereum, they're messing with it. They're messing with everything. So any and everything can become a pump and dump. It's just a matter of patience and time. Use your time wisely and use your patience, that's it. So I believe SOS was about to blow up. Guess what? It didn't blow up. Why? They know why. Well, let me ask you this. Why do you think, why do you think SOS keeps doing stock offerings? And raising money. Um, how do I answer that? Why do I think they keep doing offerings? It's an it's an opportunity to to just capitalize. It's an opportunity. They see that it's being pumped and dumped. So what what happens? Stocks go up and down. Correct. Yeah. So. When the day traders are taking opportunity to make money off this stock, they're, they're gonna keep trying to make as much money as they can. You know, I run a nonprofit and I mentioned before that if it costs, if, a, if it costs $330, let's use 380. If it costs me 380, well, if it costs a child 380 to be part of my program and that child pay me 380, it's literally set up for you to go and collect another 380. And then you can do it again. And then you can do it again. And then you can do it again. And so on and so on. Use the NFL, for instance. You can get sponsorship for the same thing over and over. So why do they keep doing it? It's all about money. They, they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. So hopefully I answered the question. I don't know. No, you answered the question. They know what they're doing, Alan. So I'm part of, hey, they said, the mind is a terrible thing to waste. So when I recognize that I'm in school and in order for me to educate myself, I have to sit in that classroom and I have to listen and I have to get my mind right. If my mind gets right, 
then the information is being processed, processed well. I'm using my brain. I'm thinking before I act. Once I recognize that, I started realizing, listen, this world has a lot of curveballs, and which is one reason why I taught my son how to play baseball. I actually use baseball to teach my kid because I realized baseball, it was hard to hit that little round ball. And life is like that. If I throw a fastball at you, you expect that this fastball is coming, you're going to hit it every time. So are you going to hit every stock? They, do they want you to hit every stock? Baseball is like the real world. It's what, that's the world we live in. Why would they want you to win all the time? So if I throw a fastball at you as a batter, <laughs> doing that, you're going to hit the ball every time. And we're not perfect, so why do I want you to perfectly hit my ball? I'm going to throw you a curve to throw you off. I'm trying to get you. I'm going to throw you a slider to throw you off. I might even throw the ball in the dirt so you can go chase it. I might even throw it at your head, which they do. They, the batter runs to the mound to try to fight the guy that tried to hit him in the head. This is what the world is like. So what's the difference with the stock market? You got to find the curve ball. You got to find the knuckle ball. You got to find the slider. And who are the people doing those things? Men cannot govern themselves. So at the end of the day, that's the way I kind of look at things. That's why I, we, we have this YouTube channel to work together uh, and become a part of what's happening. It's the real world. Cryptocurrency. There's a lot of currencies out there. How do we know which one is going to be great? Look at the ranking. Look at the ranking. Can some drop from the ranking? Sure they can. Equal it to sports. If there's a top 25, chances are a, a high percentage of the top 25 are going to stay top 25. Some drop out. Some of the small companies, some of the small teams make it into the ranking. This is the way the world is. That's why you don't look at just Tesla. That's why you have to look at Neo. That's why you don't look at just Google. We get complacent. Look at, look at, um, look at Amazon. We get complacent. Where oh, Amazon knocked off Blockbuster. We're comfortable now. So who do you think is gonna knock off Amazon? We tend to think like this as human beings that because there's something new that it's gonna stay there. Chances are it's not. And that's the way I kind of look at life. We have Google for what it is right now. But until God come take his world, there may be something else. Who, who oh, same thing that happened with Yahoo. You know, when Google first came out, people like Google, you know, they doubted it. And uh, one of the biggest downfalls in, uh, in business history, look what happened to Blockbuster. They, they were laughing at on uh, Netflix. Blockbuster yeah, could have been Netflix. <laughs> I was in a business school. I was in business class when um when I first you know heard about how Netflix took a Blockbuster to buy them, and I think they were like probably going for like a million dollars at the time. Think about it. Block. I mean Netflix, a million dollars, <laughs> and Blockbuster laugh at them. And the mistake that Blockbuster made was uh, the CEO. He. I, I, I don't understand what he was thinking because I remember back in the 90s, everyone knew computers were the future. The internet was the future. So I don't know where this guy was from and he, for him not to see the future. And he just thought like, you just blockbuster, you know, people are going to be renting movies forever. And he did not see the future of online, you know, watching movies online. So now think about it. Imagine if blockbuster had purchased Netflix at a million dollars. <laughs> Rob, there's actually a new documentary that just came out on Netflix. And matter of fact, it's about Blockbuster. Um, Blockbuster, for a long time, I thought they, they failed because they didn't pivot like Netflix did. Mm -hmm. But they, they failed because they got bought out. I can't remember the name of the company, but they got bought out. But the, the, the investment firm that bought Blockbuster, they, didn't, they did not buy the company with the best intentions. 
They just bought Blockbuster to use to hide money. Oh, they used it as like a shell company. If you watch a documentary, it will, it will break it down. But when they bought Blockbuster, they weren't focused on being profitable or or whatever, and they were making bad decisions. You know, I thought they they were doing what on Facebook be and um be doing well. They'll buy a company or what Amazon is doing now. They'll buy a company okay. to strength, strengthen themselves, or they'll buy a company to shut them down because they see the the you know the threat. No, they, the, the, well, the investment firm that bought Blockbuster, which ultimately harmed Blockbuster, they only use Blockbuster to hide money, and they they use it as a money cow, basically to take out money, put a little money, take a lot of take money, put a little bit wow. of money, you know. So at the end of the day, they never focused on evolving Blockbuster, and that that's what happened to Blockbuster. The wrong company bought them with the wrong intentions, and it hurt mm -hmm. Blockbuster. And that's why. Well, Blockbuster they, they, made the I biggest think... mistake. They made. They, yeah. Well, actually, Blockbuster made the biggest, one of the biggest mistakes in business history. That's why, until this day, they're still being talked about because I, they're eventually gonna make a movie about it, just like they did with Steve Jobs. It's almost like yeah, yeah. It, it, it's gonna be a movie one day because that is the biggest, one of the biggest blunders in business history. You know, there's still a Blockbuster, right? And I think where is it? Alaska. Is it Alaska? No, they closed the one in Alaska. It's in one of these small towns, man. They, they, there's on? only huh? one one blockbuster right now. Where is it on a block somewhere? No, no, no it's, it's in uh, it's in Savon's basement. <laughs> pretty much. No, I, I'll tell you where it is. It, it's, it's actually it's actually a big tourist site. People go there and they say, "Man, one thing I'll tell you about Blockbuster, the, the experience was good. It no, was, it was a great experience. experience. I remember, I remember those with days. Your family." And picking out a movie and grabbing some popcorn, it was a good experience. It was a good yeah. experience. Can't, can't knock them. But that was one of the biggest blunders, man. <laughs> so yeah. they were laughing at the little guy. Yeah, just like we, like we talk about, you know, a lot of times people laugh at the little guy. You don't know what the little guy might be the one flexing five, ten years from now. That's true. Okay, the, the, the only blockbuster that's still existing right now is in Bend, Oregon. So you know it's a small town. Wow. wow. So it's on a block for real. <laughs> this guy. Yeah. yeah. yeah One day Neo, Neo might be looking, might be laughing at his, uh, Tesla. You just never know. A lot of times well, people are like, oh, you know, Tesla is the you know the big kahuna, but hey, you just never know. A, a little company might come out of nowhere. What was that company you were talking about that CCIV? CCIV. Okay. Oh, because uh, I did movies. purchase the stock that you recommended. You did say that company might help them go live. Yeah. Well, C well, CCIV mer uh, uh, merged or bought. Well, I wouldn't say bought, bought, but I would say merged with a company called Lucid Motors. And I said this on a call before, and I stand this. I stand behind this. The Lucid Motor car looks better than the Tesla, in my opinion. And their I battery. Okay. Cool. Their battery is better than the Tesla. You know, but you know, Tesla, Elon Musk, he's just sitting back. He he knows what to do. So one of the guys in charge of uh Lucid Motors, he used to work for Tesla. So you know he's oh, using it. okay. Yeah, so like, they, they got they got an informal engineer from Tesla working for Lucid. But if you look at the Lucid Motor car, it looks really, really nice. No, it looks way better. It looks way better. Yeah. How about this, guys? Um, a lot of times you notice that ex-partners turn around and do different things but in in real life competition is good so sometimes who knows if they have a plan to actually do that <laughs> to be honest with you competition because you know why if you are into finance are into setting up businesses and you realize that consumers are who your consumers are and you know that they like to spend and they spend a certain way. And you have a test, you have Tesla like Elon. E Elon probably tell his partner, hey man, no smartphone company, man, so we can be in competition because competition sells. You know, how about you make that car look better than mine? And you know what? Two years later, I'm gonna make my car look better than yours. <laughs> and vice versa, man. You know, so I don't tell anything past what's happening around us. You know, it's competition. True. What's, what's your thoughts on that, guys? No, no, what you just said is straight facts. 
Straight facts. You know, yeah, I, I see the competition. Man. You know, that's why I say to myself, I'm going to start leasing cars. I ain't buying no car. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> but guys, I enjoyed my time on here. Uh, I have to get up early in the morning, but uh, I will be back. And um, have, a, have a great night because I'm, like, I'm like already falling asleep, man. So definitely. But so far, we'll talk in the morning, all right? So have a great night, everybody. All right, you too, man. Definitely have a great night. Yes, sir. Alan, we will talk, man. <laughs> definitely, Rod. Nice talking to you. All right, later. Later. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up. You know, we've been on for a while, you know. You know, Alan, we we passionate about what we're doing. So, you know, hour is not an hour for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. But, yeah, man, wanted to come on tonight and get excited about the news about IBEX, which we put in the chat. Um, I wanted to share Voyager with, with um, people because a lot of people may not know about it. Um, I wanted to share, well, I didn't really share paid, but you mentioned it, that's P-A-Y-D. Um, I'll briefly run over that before we leave. I'm gonna put it here, P-A-Y-D, paid. Research that one as well, guys. Um, I'll tell you how I found paid. I've been seeing it in little advertisements here and there. And when I went to apply for a few things, I'm saying, wow, why so many um, companies using paid? You know, I was just like, wow, I'm seeing this a lot. So I just say, hey, let me look into this, man. You know, before this thing gets way too popular, you know, so. Just look into that, you know, do your research on it because whenever you, it's like ranking, whenever you see something is constantly being put, thrown out there, you know, and you see it more, more and more and more, you got to pay attention to it. Don't let it miss you. you know? so that's the way I look at paid. It's just being used. I even see Robin Hood using it. I don't know if you've ever seen it on Robin Hood, Alan. No, I, I haven't seen it. Yeah, today, um, one of the kids, you know, 21-year-old young man, wanted to do some investing, so he signed up in Robin Hood right in front of me, and he needed my help, and that was today. And before, I already told you about paid. I used it last night, and the young man is signing up on Robin Hood, and he's funding his account, and the option came up as um paid i'm like what the heck this is a sign here just keep seeing this thing you know so even after i sent it to you i saw it again from helping somebody to fund their account in robin hood that's on my list for tomorrow morning all right and be, and, and before before you end it i just want to remind everyone that the market is closed on friday so so oh, yeah. anyone thinking about it yeah, it's good. Good Friday. So the market is actually closed on Friday. So Thursday will be your last day to get into any plays before the end of the week. Wow, you know, I forgot. <laughs> Got to re remind you, market's closed. So that means you would have had to send money today before 4 p.m. so you can trade OTC stocks tomorrow. Yeah, I sent, I sent um, a little bit, but I was going to send more tomorrow. I, yeah, you just remind me, like, darn it, it's closed. We have a long weekend. If you send it Thursday, then I believe it will be available for OTC stocks on Monday because of the holiday. Yep. Okay, so tomorrow is our Friday. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, my gosh. All right. You have yourself a good night, man. All right, all right. Have a good night. Right. Oh, Pierre. <laughs> Pierre has been quiet. He's just been listening. <laughs> yeah, man. I've been listening. Yeah, trust me. No fall asleep. I've been listening. Just my, my daughter keep making noise. <laughs> she's, she's ready to make play some football right now. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> I was like, you know what I mean? <laughs> she's okay. on the go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but uh, I just wanted you. But uh, I, I've been listening. I, I, 
I do always enjoy the the group, man. Always, I, I'm I'm always here. You know, if I don't see anything, I'm I'm always listening, taking notes. You know, always, I'm I'm here, man. Hey, I'm a lot of times I'm on here and you know driving. It makes you very tired. You know, when you're driving in the car for a long period of time, and I'm in the car for about 12 hours, it actually makes you tired. So, I find myself dragging even when I'm speaking. I feel, well, it feels that way. Um, I'm just trucking, you know, trucking along, you know. But, um, you know, we, we still give it our all. Our all, every chance we get. Thank you, guys. All right. And one day we're going to look back. Never forget these moments because we're going to look back and um, realize when we were doing this and then we're going to be doing it and you know later on when we have our millions and billions we're still going to be having our youtube channel and it's going to be ran by uh you know different people probably that you never know you know so that's the way that's the way things work sometimes it's like we might just be making cameos on our on our youtube channel yeah Cameo via hologram. <laughs> Good. With the way things going, it's gonna be a hologram. Oh yeah, you know, you know, and they have these new things popping up every time. Don't play with men. We might not be able to govern ourselves, but we try. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, we gotta keep an eye on um before you go, M V I S, because I think I forgot which company. It was a big company that just got a contract with with the U.S. Army, so it's a pretty big contract, and they're into that, uh, what do you call it, that, can't remember the name, but the company does the same thing MVIS does, basically, mm -hmm. with the virtual goggles and everything, so I'll get the name for you. I'll text you it when I remember. All right, no problem. Diversification. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Got to get right. all them. All right. Well, hopefully tomorrow is a great day. Yeah, man. And guess what? The, the reason why I really wanted to come on tonight is because, man, I just feel it. Some great run-ups is coming. And I'll leave it at that. Thanks That's so true. That's true, because I, I, I was actually telling my wife that last night. I said, look, the life we live in right now is not the life that we, we basically we, we're not where we're supposed to be yet. And that's what I told my wife. Yeah. You know, so I said something's going to happen. <laughs> and when it happens, we're not going to be able to handle it. So that's why I just been investing and just like, man, something's something's good going to happen. Yeah. You know, it's just going to take patience, you know, and we got to, we can't forget about the why. Why are we doing this? We have kids, we got family, we got mortgages, we got car notes, you know? Mm -hmm. So what, why are we doing this? Yes, exactly. And that's why we got to stay the course, which is what I've been telling my business partners, Rod and Ed, because we all struggle, you know, and in order to stop that or stop so much struggle, we have to always stick to what we start because when you jump ship, that's mm -hmm. when you find yourself starting something new and you're going to remind yourself, man, I remember when I was in the other thing, why didn't I stay doing the other thing? I see people do that and they don't go nowhere, you know, and that's, that's, it becomes natural for people to do that. You know, like I said, the mind is a terrible thing to waste. And if you keep going backwards to start something that you already started, you keep on we keep on going back to the same position. It's like, why be on your If you start out great, chances are the reason why it didn't continue great is because too much is on people's mind and obstacles come in your way and you jump out. But then a couple of years down the road, you're like, damn, let me do that again. Well, hold up. You were just in this before. <laughs> so... I see that too many times with people. So I don't jump ship for nothing. So yep. we're on our way. 
Yes, sir. All right. Night, guys. All right. Have a good night, man. You too. All right, brother. Take care. Right. You too.